Usually, if a game is visually unappealing, it is already starting off on the wrong foot. Game developers these days spend a lot of their time just worrying about that the game looks good, and they don't really put a lot of time or energy into actually making it fun. Then of course, there are games on the opposite end of the spectrum, which have thousands of hours of content, systems that take a decade to fully understand, and so much complexity that No Man's Sky seems like Candyland. I'm referring to you, Dwarf Fortress, who by the way, didn't even have graphics at all until this year. These two things are opposite ends of the spectrum. But what if I told you about another option that somehow missed both the graphics and the gameplay target, but somehow became one of the most fun games that I've played in a very long time? It has graphics that reminds me of old school RuneScape if it was made in the Roblox engine, controls that make Dungeons and Dragons seem user friendly, and systems that are pretty complex but somewhat predictable after a period of time. I'm talking about Kenshi, and let me tell you, this game is absolutely awesome. So to start, what is all this? The UI in this game is absolutely AIDS, and you probably need a bit of an explanation as to what's going on here, because I know I did when I first downloaded it. So let me give you the rundown. Kenshi is a thief simulator RPG where you live in a post-post-post-apocalyptic world that somehow has ended multiple times, probably because an army of goats killed humanity. For real, if you don't have the combat capabilities of Leonidas in 300, these assholes are way stronger than you think and they'll decapitate you even if you look at them the wrong way. You start out your journey as a weak, naked, starving normie and your goal is to evolve into the Giga Chad warlord of the wild, wild desert. You're basically the main character in Dune, but instead of starting out with a royal family who's about to take over a planet, you start out with no clothes, a stick, and the mental IQ of a snail. The world is not on your side, and as you evolve, get stronger, and make money, you can eventually build a thriving outpost and recruit an army of cult-like followers to help make your journey a bit easier. While the world may have crumbled multiple times, capitalism has survived, and you'll need to increase your revenue to form a monopoly on every good that you can produce, to buy more followers, grow stronger, and eventually take over the world. But see, that's just one of the ways to play Kenshi. This game doesn't have a set path, and that's the beauty of it. You can go the expected route and try to become as strong and powerful as possible, or you can play as a solo rogue assassin who travels around as a nomad, hunts bounties, and survives off of what he can steal. You can be a trader who finds the most sustainable routes around the world and capitalizes on selling booze to lonely desert alcoholics. It doesn't matter. Kenshi is an RPG, and it gives you the foundation to build whatever you want to build. And that's part of why it's so beautiful, even though it's so ugly. I know that was a weird way to introduce a game that I love, but that's the beauty of Kenshi. I need to spend some time to dive into all of the nuances, because it may take you a little while to understand, considering that every time you try, you're going to get jumped by a band of bandits and get injured in the process. And injuries are expensive, which is why I'm excited to partner with the sponsor of today's video, Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm with over 800 lawyers and 4,000 case staff that are ready to fight for you to get you the compensation you deserve. When you get injured, you have the right to sue because of your injuries. But believe it or not, you're not suing the person who injured you. You're suing the billion dollar insurance corporations that represent these people. So there's no reason to feel bad for getting the compensation you deserve. Morgan & Morgan has attorneys that focus on everything from car accidents, slip and fall, workplace injuries, medical malpractice, nursing home abuse, and more. And best of all, their fee is 100% free unless they win. There's no upfront costs, no sign-up fees, nothing. Their fee is 100% free unless they win the case. So if you're ever injured in an accident, check out Morgan & Morgan by visiting the link in the description or dialing pound law on your cell phone. The link is forthepeople.com slash robocast. Thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video. Now you understand the gist of what Kenshi has to offer, but this is just a small fraction of what makes this game succeed while many others fail. Just because a game offers freedom doesn't mean it's going to drag you in and keep you playing for hours. So what exactly does Kenshi bring to the table? Well the beauty in this game is the fact that your guy is absolutely f***ing garbage. See, when you spawn, you have no skills whatsoever. You can't fight, you can't be sneaky, you can't defend yourself, and you can't even pick up an item off the goddamn ground without the local town guard catching you from 10 buildings over. The fact that you even managed to exist is beyond me, but that's the beauty. 
Starting out at the very bottom means that the only way to go is up. So you have to spend time and strategize about what you want to do in your playthrough and then train to make that happen. With my current playthrough, I decided that I wanted to train a crossbowman to become the best shooter in the desert. My main focus was training my aim and becoming a sort of Hawkeye that all the locals would fear. So, in order to do this, I spent nearly two hours finding bandits and running away while picking them off one by one. I bought more bolts, attracted these enemies, and continued to shoot at them until my aim became better and my confidence went through the roof. Then, I took all of their gear and sold it to the local shop to make money to buy better gear and increase my combat capabilities. As I gained money and notoriety, I recruited new members to the team and spent time building out their skills as well. Now, I have a well-trained researcher, a few workers, a brute that's in charge of carrying things, and some other characters that are tasked with killing any enemy that gets in my way. I became attached to these stupid-ass characters because I spent so much time and energy building them into what I wanted them to be. I understand the appeal of a badass, enemy-killing, testosterone-producing, NOS-energy-drinking warlord, but I kind of like the fact that in Kenshi, your character is normal, and you have to put in the work to evolve him into who you want him to be. It's a true role-playing experience, and it's brutal, which makes the whole thing much more satisfying when you do manage to succeed. Because trust me, it is going to be a challenge. This game is extremely unforgiving, and the brutal environment makes the satisfaction of building out your characters so much greater. I told you about my good start and how my guy became the Daryl Dixon of Saudi Arabia, but I didn't tell you about my failed experiments. And this game has a lot of them. If you want a good glimpse into the typical Kenshi experience, let me tell you a story. One time, I spent hours mining iron with a group of five pretty solid characters, just for one of them to get kidnapped by a cult that lived in a local village. So, with four characters to spare, I continued mining until I saved up enough money to recruit an army of mercenaries to help me take him back and set him free. As I got to the town, the mercenaries started wreaking havoc on the entire cult village. It looked like the scene in Game of Thrones where Jon Snow almost gets trampled to death, and these mercs were badass. They mowed through these enemies like they were nothing, and when the dust cleared, it was time to free our prisoner. But that didn't happen because he died of starvation during the battle. It's okay though, I just have to loot this village and sell the items and I'll have enough money to recruit a new team member. Or so I thought. See, the chaos actually attracted another group of much more powerful enemies who wanted to claim the spoils. So they came in, killed all of the mercenaries and my two remaining guys, making the two that survived into slaves that would later die while trying to escape. That is Kenji. And if you've played this game, you know exactly what I'm talking about, so if you did, Feel free to drop a comment below and tell me your favorite Kenshi story, I'm sure other people would love to see them. This ugly little game isn't a linear, predetermined path. It's a story generator that, based on how things unfold, can lead to a crazy experience unlike no other. Every single playthrough is different, and the circumstances of the insanely difficult and unforgiving world keeps it interesting every single time. Your character is never going to be the best guy on the planet, and you will always face some sort of challenge one way or another. If one region of the map becomes too easy, the next one will put you in check, and the cycle continues until eventually, you either die or become the guy you want to be. And then, you have the urge to restart, change your path, and try again. I love the process, and every single experience creates a new story that you can craft into the novel that you want it to be. And the cool thing about these stories is that they're made even better by the scale of what this game has to offer. Now, for context, this game is set in apocalyptic desert wastelands, so a lot of it is the same and is fairly uninteresting visually. But that's not where the beauty lies. This world is unique because the beauty is in the differences in each region of the world. A lot of games just make each region a reskinned version of the previous. But in Kenshi, each area of the map will bring different adventures and challenges. I was going to count the number of factions to prove my point, but there's so goddamn many of them that I'm just going to show you this map instead. This is a map of the world with every region and the major factions that control these regions. As you can see, there are a lot of them, and they'll often have battles and skirmishes between each other, losing many lives in the process and having a random group of Robocast-led peasants to steal their stuff and sell it back to them. These different factions make up a huge part of the world, and you'll always be running into different ones around every corner. And you better be careful, because 99% of them will want to kill you. Unlike many other games, these factions aren't just reskins of each other. Each factions have different beliefs and behaviors that really influence the world as a whole. 
For example, the Holy Nation will attack a member of any of the non-human races on site, unless that member is joined by a human. The Shek Kingdom is destroyed after a long war with the Holy Nation, but they're barbaric warlords who have beef with all of the more peaceful factions. The Empire is the biggest faction that only cares about money, and is ruled by a ruthless, arrogant emperor who calls all of your characters scum and will attack you if you don't bow down to him when he sees you. There's outlaws and cannibals and slavers and the Hive and all sorts of other factions that have different behaviors and tolerances for you and your crew. Each of their villages have different types of buildings, different shops, aesthetics, people, animals, and culture, and you can really feel these differences as you move along throughout the massive world of Kenshi. While a lot of these characters are generic warriors or nameless tribe members, there are over 150 unique named characters spread throughout as well. And just like the factions, each of these characters are entirely different. On my last playthrough, I met a guy named Chad and recruited him into my squad because he claimed that he crossed the desert unarmed and survived some of the toughest monsters in the world. But he quickly died because he was actually kind of useless. And then there's Beep, who is a gym. He's everyone's favorite character that follows you around like a puppy, has no concept of money, and makes random beeping sounds for no reason whatsoever. Beep must be protected at all costs. These are just two of the many characters, all of which have different culture, traits, dialogue, actions, and behaviors that influence them and once again make the world feel very unique and alive. And all of these characters can be recruited into your squad for the right price. The thing that makes this world, these factions, and the many characters interesting is a concept in Kenshi called world states. See, there's not just a bunch of characters sitting around and waiting on you to be their knight in shining armor like in every other game. These characters and their positions and their behaviors are all determined by the decisions that you make in the world. Meaning, if you kill or kidnap a faction leader, a new one can come into power, but who that is varies on what you did with the other factions beforehand. So if one guy's alive but another's dead, it creates a power vacuum causing guy number three to take power. But if you killed guy number three in an earlier interaction, then a different faction can come in and take the previous faction's place. It's super complex, and there are hundreds of possible combinations of world states that could lead to thousands of possibilities for where these characters are at any given time. Instead of the world existing solely for your sake, the developers made it feel like this world will exist without you, and it doesn't give a shit what you're doing. It's gonna continue to live its life. But if you want to interfere, you have the ability to do that too, as long as your squad is strong enough. You may start out as a useless sand dune redneck, but you can recruit your own group of useless sand dune rednecks to join you. So as your character gets stronger and you improve your skills, you have to manage the strengths and the weaknesses of the other people that you recruited to create the squad that will most easily help you accomplish your goals. You can recruit the numbers and have an NPC army that rivals that of the Twitter community, or you can have a handful of high-level guards that help protect your convoy of animals that you overwork and underfeed for financial gain. You can recruit these new members at the local bar or by randomly interacting with them while you're traveling across the wasteland. And by paying them, you can add them to your team. Just like prostitutes, the more expensive ones are better, but even if you spend a bunch of money on them, you're probably still going to end up dying because of your other bad decisions. Because the thing is, most of them, just like you, are average Joes with no skills whatsoever. So you don't only have to manage who you want in your squad, but you also have to manage their strengths and weaknesses and assign them tasks based on these. And believe it or not, there are actually more things to do than just kill people. You don't have to be a desert John Wick if you don't want to. You see, another big part of the Kenshi experience, and another path that most people end up going down, is to set up a base of operations. Kenshi has an in-depth base building and research system that can help you establish a desert outpost that makes Good Springs look like the Taj Mahal. In the initial phases, you gotta buy these big-ass bundles of building materials to set up a tiny little shack and some storage, and your goal is to research as many new technologies as possible to level up, make your base stronger, and make more money. This is where those tasks come in. Some of your guys will be miners, some will be errand boys running to and from the cities to buy what you need, some will be guards, some will farm, some will produce goods, and some will do research. Your ragtag team of brain-dead adventurers are how you accomplish your goals, and as your base levels up, your guys will get stronger and you'll start to make a dent in the world. You can automate all of these jobs where you don't have to micromanage a bunch of boring shit, which is definitely nice because watching someone mine rocks for hours on end isn't the most entertaining thing in the world. The base building is fun and challenging enough to make it my standard approach for how I want to play the game. 
It's extremely time intensive and extremely risky, because just like everything else in this game, it isn't going to be easy. Depending on where you build your base, you're going to have to deal with those different factions that I mentioned earlier. If you're in Shek territory, they will challenge you and force you to attack them to prove that you're worthy. If you settle in Empire territory, they'll demand that you pay taxes. And if you settle in the Holy Nation, they want you to always carry a copy of their sacred book, and they want you to participate in their weekly prayer days. Where your base is has a huge impact on how you play the game, and it needs to be a part of your strategy for your best odds at survival. And the way that it ties you down and makes you feel connected with the world is another thing that really helps to make Kenshi so immersive and so awesome. Now, protecting this base is going to be hard, so you can actually hire mercenaries and bodyguards that will keep you alive. Because even with these factions, there are also bandits and hostile mobs that you have to worry about as well. You don't want to f*** the beak things, and shit, even goats are a risk if you're stupid like me and try to attack them with a stick. So, take my warning, train your combat skills, build defenses, and don't attack goats. They actually wiped out my entire squad. And if somehow all of these stories and adventures get boring to you, there's an entire workshop with thousands of additional mods and changes that can make Kenshi into the game you want it to be. To be honest, you probably want to use some of them, like the one that changes the UI to a dark mode like you probably noticed in some of the footage, and one that makes the loading screens a little bit less intensive because loading screens in this game are absolutely brutal. But in short, these mods add thousands of new things to do and thousands of new stories to tell, and it makes the entire experience infinitely replayable. I've touched on a lot of the points that make Kenshi as good as it is, but that doesn't mean that the game is without flaws. In fact, there are quite a few flaws, and some of them are very frustrating. Like I said before, the first one is the fact that loading times are insane, Whenever you have a pretty big squad and you have different guys spread out around different areas of the map, sometimes it takes a good 45 seconds to maybe even 2 minutes to load into where that new character is. And again, once you have a big squad, it becomes extremely annoying. Also, there needs to be a faster way to travel around the map. I'm not saying it needs to be fast travel, but I mean, you're in a world with tons of different animals and all sorts of unique things that could be added as a way to travel, whether that's riding a horse or some other animal something more creative like a sandboard that you could like ride down the, the hills or you know a hot air balloon maybe that could be kind of cool uh, a bird you could fly on or even like in avatar the last airbender when they have the the sandbenders who are pushing the sails on like the sand ships think about it could be kind of cool the map is absolutely huge and i don't have eight hours to constantly travel across the map just to get killed by fogmen i think there needs to be a more efficient way to do stuff like that and if you have any, I'd love to hear your suggestions in the comments. Also, I think there needs to be more late to end game content. Um, once you become successful and have money and have followers, I feel like you should be able to raid towns and turn them into your own. If you go into the town and kill everybody in it, not saying I would ever do something like that, but if you did, you should be able to claim the town as your own and make it your, your faction outpost that rival factions will want to attack. It just seems like it's a big possibility that could improve the game a lot, and it kind of sucks that it's missing. But outside of these minor problems, Kenshi is an outstanding title, and if you like games like this, I definitely recommend it 10 out of 10 times. It's a game that you'll always come back to and always have a new story, and those story generation games like RimWorld and Kenshi, they just don't get old. They're so much fun, and it's just so much more relaxing when compared to something competitive like Apex or COD or all the usuals. That's going to be it for today's video, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm sure you've noticed this is my first ever video where I introduce my face into it, so kind of exciting. Um, let me know your thoughts on the format. I'd love to hear about it. Shoot me a DM over on Instagram at Robocast um, and tell me what your thoughts are. What could I improve? What could I do better? Do you like it better without the face cam? Let me know in the comments or on Instagram. But that's it for the video. I'll see you guys next time and peace.